Hi, you're listening to Redneck Theology, a short program providing a common sense look at Christianity. I'm your host, Bill Witte. Questions or comments may be emailed to redneckTheology at gmail.com. Now, on with the broadcast. An extinction event. The idea of mankind might soon face an event capable of destroying all life seems to constantly appear somewhere in the news. With recent changes such as increased volcanic activity, earthquakes, fires, floods, hurricanes, and other natural disasters taking place at an alarming rate, many fear our planet may soon no longer support life. Others point to the heavens and the frequency of eclipses, meteor showers, constellation changes, and near misses of the earth by asteroids or even other planets as signs that our impending demise is just just over the horizon. Well, along with many scientists, religious scholars, both real and self-proclaimed, seem to appear everywhere adding some new reason to believe that the earth will soon be destroyed. What can we do about it? I mean, that, that's on the mind of most who listen to these projections. Many say we simply can't stop it or prepare for it, and some truth exists in all predictions. That's what makes them believable. It's also what makes them of a concern. The religious world tends to exaggerate at times. Yeah, I know, hard to believe, right? (laughs) It's true. Perhaps it's a desire to see the promise of heaven become a reality that, you know, ends trials, ends sufferings forever. Maybe that's what fuels the hype. It's easy to buy into a theory or a prediction that ends with a result we want to see take place. Unfortunately, many of the well-meaning preachers and prophets, and I use the term loosely, get so carried away with explaining the signs of Christ's soon coming return that they overlook much of the timeline explained in the Bible. Will there be an extinction-level event take place? Yes, without a doubt. Can we stop it? No. Do we have to suffer through it? No. Can we escape it? Yes. That's the answer so many fail to accept, much less recognize as valid. We can prepare for and actually live beyond the coming extinction of mankind. I know that sounds contradictory, but it's true. How can one live beyond an event that brings about their extinction? Wouldn't wouldn't they fail to be extinct? If that's the case, thus making the event a non-extinction event? Well, see, God has explained all this in the Bible. He's provided instructions on how to prepare and not just survive, but flourish. All the changes taking place in and about the earth have been foretold. What we see happening now is not the final display, however. These are all reminders of what's been foretold and what's ahead. The increasing number of events is a call to wake up and pay attention before the final event actually begin to take place. In the recent Hurricane Irma, we saw a possible explanation of how an entire race of people were saved while another perished. In the Old Testament, there's an account of the children of Israel passing through the Red Sea on dry ground, and that has often been disputed. The idea seems impossible. Well, especially when combined with the teaching that the armies of Pharaoh pursued them and they lost the wheels off their chariots and drowned in the same sea as they pursued the Israelites who had just gone over on dry ground. But in the hurricane, we saw miles of ocean sucked away and an ocean bed underneath exposed which was dry enough that people could jump on it and walk on it. What's that got to do with the Red Sea? Well, picture, if you will, a great wind, which is what Exodus in the 14th chapter describes separating the sea, sucking all the water out with such intensity that the ground is even dried. Just as the inlets begin to fill, uh, or refill rather, picture the pursuing army. It's crossing over. The water begins to refill the seabed. The ground becomes wet. The wheels mire up, 
even getting stuck and coming off as they attempt to move until the water rises and engulfs them all. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. But I do find it much easier to understand how such a thing could have happened. God is giving us time to turn to Him and acknowledge Him. He's allowing us to see how He can use what we might call natural events to bring about spiritual and supernatural occurrences. He mercifully simplifies mysteries to a level that we might understand and accept in order to encourage us to place our faith in Him. As we trust Him, we can begin to accept things beyond our comprehension as factual. Looking at the vastness of His power becomes like looking towards the heavens. We see, but we cannot find the end or the boundaries. It then becomes clear God can and will do what He has said. So back to the idea of preparing for extinction. I can't in this short podcast cover all the events listed in the book of Revelation or Matthew the 24th chapter or the book of Daniel or numerous other scriptures pointing towards the end times. I do know that the 21st chapter of Revelation starts out with telling that a new heaven and a new earth will replace the one we now know. It says the first heaven and first earth passed away. That definitely sounds like an end. Before that happens, the earth and all its people will go through times of suffering and turmoil like nothing we've ever seen to date. It'll be like nothing that ever took place before. That time is still future, at the recording of this podcast at least. There is a way to avoid it, however. That is what God is calling mankind to do. Follow the plans to be ready to evacuate before extinction begins. God wishes to transform us, change us into something new. If we'll turn our lives over to Him, according to what the Scripture says in the second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17, a metamorphosis takes place, where the, the person we are becomes extinct, and a new creature is born. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, somebody might think that's stretching things a bit, but the Greek words we translate into new creature actually mean something that never existed before. Now, true, we may look the same, may seem similar to the way that we always were, but a transformation takes place within that allows us even to recognize we're different, and others will sense and see that also. What happens is that our very nature changes. We desire to please God more than anything else. We see with new eyes the spiritual realm in a way we never knew existed before. We gain power over bad habits and wrongdoing in our lives. We find love where it never existed before. Our old person becomes extinct, and the newly born us will leave this world before the events that bring about the passing away of heaven and earth. Are you looking at world events Wars, threats of wars, civil unrest, tales of doom, riots, prophecies, supernatural happenings, religious rumors, or or any of the like, and wondering about the future? Well, quit wondering. Get ready. What must happen to convince God's people to truly put God's first? I mean, so many so-called Christians go to church, sing songs, play great music, have social events, have fun but they're still not ready. What about you? Where does God fit into your life? Or does he? Or do you fit into him? Do you fit into his life? See, doing good isn't enough. Going to church doesn't make it right. I don't mean to belabor a point, but time is truly running out to make up your mind. God isn't waiting for you to get your life in order. He wants you to give your life to Him just as it is and allow Him to get it in order. If you'll admit to Him you've sinned and ask His forgiveness, He will grant it. If you're willing to follow His instructions, He'll give you the power to do that. You can have peace. You can have joy in the midst of a world that's fallen apart. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart 
that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Simply that means you can pray out loud right now with me and be saved. You may live a good life and be a nice person, but unfortunately, hell is full of good people. It's full of nice people. Unless we do as God tells us, we leave him no choice but to allow us to go through the hard times and at death to go into hell. It's our choice, and God will honor our decision. If you want to make the decision to follow his directions, you can repeat this prayer out loud with me. As long as you mean the words in your heart, God will honor it. In the first epistle of John, the very first chapter, verse 9, tells us, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you're ready to be cleansed, let's pray. Dear God, I admit I have done wrong. I have sinned, and I am a sinner. I'm willing to turn away from sin and anything that displeases you. Please forgive all my sins. I choose to trust in Jesus' death on the cross as payment for the penalty for my sins. I'm asking you to apply that payment to my account and cleanse me from all sin. I will look to Jesus as my boss, my Lord, from now on. With your help, I will stop sinning and live according to your word, the Bible. Thank you, God, for hearing me, forgiving me, and saving me just now. Amen. Now, you are a true Christian and a new creature. One of the first and most important things to help you start out in this new life is to let others know what just happened. Tell everyone you can that you've become a Christian, you've been born again, or that you got saved. If they'd like to do the same, you can lead them in a prayer similar to the one you just prayed. And praying is something you need to do anywhere and anytime. You can anywhere or anytime. You don't have to go through a particular form or fashion or be in a, a certain place. It's important to pray. It's simply talking to God and listening for Him to answer. And if you listen to Him, or listen for Him rather, He will speak to you. He'll do it in many ways. One of the most common is through the Bible. That's why reading it daily is important. Even if you tried before and had trouble understanding it, you'll find it different now. You know the author personally now. And before you read, just ask God to help you understand and to speak to you through it. Set aside an amount of time to spend reading daily. I suggest starting in the book of John. One other important step to take is finding a group of believers you can worship with and learn with and learn from by attending Sunday school and, and Bible studies and worship services. Your life will be different from now on. You can go to God with any question or problems. The time will come when the world as we know it will end. Before then, the true Christians, like yourself, will be taken from this world. If you die before then, you'll immediately be in heaven. Before the world ends, Jesus will appear in the clouds with a trumpet sound and resurrect the bodies of dead Christians. They'll be changed in an instant and reunited with their spirits to meet Jesus in the clouds and be with him forever. Then those Christians who are still alive will be changed, and they'll go to meet Jesus in the clouds also. The old you, well, that person's extinct. The new you will live forever with Jesus. You don't need to worry about the future. You've already overcome an extinction event. That's our program for today. I'm Bill Witte thanking you for listening to Redneck Theology. Your questions or comments may be emailed to redneck-theology at gmail.com. Please join me again next time for more Redneck Theology.